The Budget and Finance Committee has been in existence for a long time, and these are the members that are currently on this. Uh, many of them have been on the Budget and Finance Committee for a number of years. Uh, we started working together in September to put this budget together. So today we'll talk about several areas. First of all, we're going to talk about the 2015 results. Uh, we adopted a balanced budget last year at convention, and I'll take you through where we project our final results will be for this year. Uh, second, the most significant item in any budget is pledge income. It makes up almost 70% of our income, so I will talk to you a little bit in detail about our pledges and the status we have there. And third, I'll present the budget that the Budget and Finance Committee worked on since September, made presentations to council, uh, held a budget forum in October, uh, and at its December meeting, uh, the council approved this budget to be presented for adoption at a convention. And then finally, there are several areas uh, of additional spending outside the budget that I want to let you know about, and also briefly the, some of the work of the trustees and the Diocesan Investment Trust. But first, let's take a look at the 2015 results. A year ago, uh, we were gathered together and I reported that 2014 ended, uh, we were slightly in the, in the black. Our uh, income exceeded expenses and when the books were finally closed, uh, we had a positive bottom line of $24,000. That was the sixth year that we've been able to uh, finish in the black. At last year's uh, 141st convention, uh, we adopted a balanced budget. Uh, we continued our commitment to fund our efforts to become more of a missional uh, church and congregations. Uh, our pledge to the Episcopal Church uh, was equal to the amount of the assessment. Uh, we were able to increase outreach by 3.5% over the year before. We continued for the third year to reduce the underfunded lay pension plan liability that we have. And also for the third year, we added money to the fund uh, that we had created in 2013 for the inevitable search and call of our next bishop. So how did we do? Well, the first two columns here show the uh, budget for 2015 and our projected results for the year 2015. And the third column shows the variances. Let me take you through briefly uh, where we the major items there, but if you look at the bottom line, you can see at this point we project a slight increase, uh, excess of income over expenses. In terms of pledges, uh, we budgeted uh, for it to be flat with the year before, $2.1 million, and based upon the income that we've received so far, we believe the $2.1 million will be where we end up for the year. Good news about the Alleluia Fund, uh, in 2014, we received $113,000 of Alleluia Fund donations, which was a record. Uh, we've never received that much since this fund was started in 2010. Our budget for this year, 2015, was $120,000, and we've uh, matched, we've met that uh, goal. In fact, we're at about $122,000 at this point, so that's a record for uh, the Alleluia Fund, which is dedicated directly to our outreach efforts. Our budget for 2015 also included funds that we could receive, that we would receive and use from other sources, specifically the New Ministry Initiatives Fund, uh, which is a fund that's available for us to use uh, for our missional church initiatives and other, uh, as well as proceeds from the sale of closed church properties. And we use the funds from those two sources to pay the expenses related to the coordinator for missional church strategy, our missional church initiatives, uh, our advisor for, for development, as well as to contribute money to our funds to reduce the lay pension plan underfunded liability and add to the search and call for our next bishop. We, bit, we budgeted to use uh, $400,000 from those funds to cover those expenses, and for what we budgeted, we came in pretty much right on target. Um, if you look, however, on the third line, you see that income provided from other uh, funds is about $100,000 higher. That relates directly to the second expense line pledged to the Episcopal Church, which has a negative variance of just under $100,000. Let me explain what, we, what happened there. You may recall that in 2010, uh, it was discovered that the diocese had not paid its complete 2008 pledge to the Episcopal Church. Starting in 2011, 
we put ten thousand dollars into the budget and we paid that as uh, payments to reduce that liability starting in 2011 and we did so through 2014 and this year we paid seventy five hundred toward that ten thousand dollar liability but when all all of that was paid at the end of September our balance was still four hundred thirty three thousand dollars knowing that uh, $10,000 a year was going to take a long time for us to, uh, to settle this, um, we were, we've been looking for a way to um, come to, uh, to settle this uh, liability. When we sold some closed church properties in tw late 2014 and early 2015, that gave us the opportunity to, to address this. And so I had a conversation with my counterpart at the Episcopal Church and discussed this and talked about the, the $10,000 a year, the fact that, that that may not even continue at some point. Somebody might say, we've just got to stop doing this. Uh, at best, it would still take over 40 years for us to reduce this. So I asked him, what if we were to give you a one-time lump sum payment that would, be, that would take all of this into consideration? And how would, if, how would the Episcopal Church look on that? He was very happy to continue the conversation. <laughs> so I spoke with our trustees, with our standing committee, council, and uh, proposed that we settle this uh, with the Episcopal Church, and they authorized me to do so. And so I offered the, the Episcopal Church $100,000 as a lump sum payment to relieve us of this $433,000 liability. The Episcopal Church was thrilled. They were very happy. They can do a lot more with $100,000 now than they could $10,000 coming for the next 40 years. They're very happy. They actually look on this as a way of uh, us being a model for other dioceses that don't, haven't always completed their pledges. So we've made that $100,000 payment uh, and the $433,000 liability is off our books. Uh, other income, investment income, was a little higher than normal, than we budgeted, and all other items for income were pretty much uh, right on line or slightly better than budget. In terms of expenses, our personal uh, salaries and benefits uh, account for half of our total expenses, and the amount was exactly on budget for the year. Our 2015 pledge to the Episcopal Church um, was equal to the amount of their assessment and the amount of our budget. Our outreach spending was exactly what we had budgeted, $171,050. With regards to post-retirement uh, insurance costs, we have to make uh, certain estimates as to what the actual spending is going to be each year. It depends upon uh, people as they age and uh, move into retirement. If they could die, that could also affect our payments. Uh, so what we needed to do this year is we worked with our actuaries to determine what the total long-term liability was going to be. Uh, and we ended up paying $10,000 for that uh, analysis that'll help us for the next few years and we have a better idea about what our ex expenses will be in the future. So that explains that variance there. Office and administration costs were higher due to overages in a couple areas, just by about $5,000. Much of that was utilities at Episcopal House but we were favorable in terms of uh, all other expenses. So the bottom line is that we're projecting a slight excess of income over expenses. Uh, it's assuming that we get the final $2.1 million of pledge income. I think we will. Uh, if that falls a little uh, lower, or if some strange bill comes that we didn't know about, we could end up slightly in the red, but I don't at this point think that that's gonna happen. So for 2015, we met our financial goals. We continue to invest in our missional church initiatives. Uh, we continued our fund development efforts. We reduced the liability for our lay pension plan, and I'll explain that in more detail in a little while. And again, we added to the fund for a search and call of our next bishop. <laughs>